Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Maciej, uh, for introducing me. Uh, okay, um, so I'm coming from the other side, uh, on the side of science. I'm still there, not on the uh, entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurship science, uh, part. So um, I'm trying to, I'll be trying to share with you some of the interesting things um, I'm doing at University of Birmingham about robots and the uh, technology behind and what robots can do, what they cannot do, why they cannot do, and uh, uh, some of the stuff uh, we've been working on, which can uh, make us uh, uh, small advances in, uh, uh, especially in robotic manipulation. Uh, okay, let me start. So. Here we have some examples of, uh, uh, of robots. So, oh, it will be hard to see, it's really true. So, uh, you had uh, uh, Atlas from Boston Dynamics. You had robots uh, capable of playing some games. You have uh, robotic cars, and uh, it's all quite amazing. And on the other hand, we have uh, AI systems like uh, uh, over, uh, almost 20 years ago, I, uh, IBM created a um, computer which was able to defeat uh, chess master uh, Kasparov. Uh, just uh, two months ago, uh, DeepMind uh, created a system which was able to beat another uh, master, but in Go, in Go, uh, in Go game. And we have also, for example, voice assistants. Uh, intelligent ones. So, where, where are these robots there? They are not around us, so what is, what's the reason for it? Uh, here I'll show you some funny video about now to start. This is actually terrible. <laughs> it's for roboticists, it's actually heartbreaking. I, I can't really watch it, but there is something wrong. So it's kind of, someone is cheating here, right? So uh, why this is happening? Um, so that's the explanation why there, there, is, there are no terminators around us. Um, okay, I will try to answer this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't watch it. Yeah, no. it's, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, so, there are three parts, okay, I, I, I have a, like a general part of a talk in a, uh, at the beginning, which be a bit of science, sorry for this, I hope you don't mind, uh, and then there will be uh, a bit more science, which, uh, but from uh, our university, and uh, something about applications. Okay, so let's start. Uh, okay, so what's missing? On the one hand, we have human level competences of this uh, AI systems, and terrible, actually, performance of robots. So there is something like, you could roughly say, there is something like symbolic there, yeah? So if, if you have this uh, chess or something, you have like going from A to B, it's very symbolic. And, and the, the robots, they actually don't use any, where the symbols are, there is nothing. They have to walk, they have to do something. Uh, so there is a, something which actually there is a kind of explanation, not direct, that I don't know if you know, but evolution worked like half a billion years of, on the central nervous system, Why the language is actually only half a million years. So what was doing for the 99.9% uh, of time? That's really, really, really strange. So perhaps that's the explanation why, the, why this, we are missing it. So, there is one interesting experiment. Uh, I said it's going to be a bit of science. It's psychology. This is psychology. Uh, it's called change blindness. So I'm going to ask you now, if you tell me what's changing in the picture, OK? You, you tell me the, uh, the region of a picture, which is what's changing. Where's the change? Can you see it? Oh, come on, it cannot take that long. It's here, over here, 
You see it? Right? Okay, here's another one. Where's the change? Ah, you see it, yeah? It's over here. Yeah? It's uh, around his head. All right, here's another, the last one. It's also a change. It's, a, it's a slightly different. Yeah? Do, do you see the change? Yeah, you, okay. Right, okay, there is a change, yeah? You can see it over here. Here, along there. Okay, so it's called uh, change blindness, this, uh, that the brief disruption in vision can cause dramatic, we just don't see it. So, but what is interesting about this? Interesting is actually ex interpretation of this, that we have this illusion of richness, actually, of what we see, but in fact, our, uh, our, uh, what gets to our consciousness, it's so tiny, it's almost nothing. So there is a huge something going on behind, okay? And we don't know what it is, really. I mean, we, we do know, we have some, some clues, but that's a kind of explanation of what is going on, in a way, or what we don't know. Okay, let's, let's, let's go ahead. So this is about the robots now. Uh, so uh, I will try to tell you something about how they are built. So they, they, are, they are kind of rigid, so they are connected with links, uh, the links are connected with joints, and the, uh, there are 20 to 60 of them. This is typic typical what you have. Then you have sensors, so they have cameras, yes? Yeah? So they, they have depth cameras, for example, which are quite uh, uh, widely used recently. And uh, there is, you can see as a robot, or pretty much everybody, that there, there is something coming to the cameras, yeah? And there is some sort of processing, and they are doing something. The robots are doing something, yeah? So there's kind of input-output, yeah? It's on the input something coming, and, and they, they do something. Okay, so let's look at about the robots which are around, around us. So there are teleoperated robots. So these robots actually, they, are, they can do quite interesting things, but there, there are no sensors. So look at this. So this is a surgery-like operation, uh, but it's fully controlled by a human. So, but there is no sensing here. It's, it's, human is instead of sensors, okay? Then you have, th these robots are very useful, of course, and very interesting from other, uh, other perspective. Then you have pre-programmed robots, when the, the robots are following some sort of plan. So they also look like quite amazing, but you have to remember, they don't really do very serious autonomous decisions, yeah? That's so they can un unscrew the, uh, for example, the lead and so forth and so forth. And then you have these interesting robots, well, from my perspective, when they really take decisions, so they have sensors under input, okay? Okay, so let's go back for a moment to uh, AI playing systems. It's, it's, it's not too difficult, yeah? So, so how it works? It's actually pretty boring. So what computer does, it just analyzes every step, what is going to happen. So that, that was possible 20 years ago already, because there are not that many moves to possible to analyze in chess. And that's why it was possible to, to defeat uh, chess master. But with Go, it's slightly different, because board is much bigger, and there is a problem, because every step ahead, there are so many combinations that there is no robot which can actually do this. But what the masters are doing, the, the human master players, uh, players uh, they actually don't analyze moves. They just look at the board, and they know what is happening. Okay? And here we have a DeepMind AlphaGo system, which actually analyzes what's on the board and uh, predicts what's the next move. The only problem with it, it's re it needs 30 million uh, of, uh, of moves to be provided by human to actually to start any kind of learning and prediction, okay? That's quite a lot. So let's go back to, to robots now. And um, we, we observe one thing. So, <sighs> Actually, two things. So, uh, first of all, robots can do amazing things if they are controlled, kind of remotely. And when they 
have to observe the world around, everything breaks. So like this uh, DARPA challenge robots from the last year, they were just was unable to, to do simple things. Uh, so the big question is, can we use these algorithms now uh, to, to do the job? So I'll get to deep learning for, for grasping and manipulation, also from, uh, from DeepMind. So what they tried, they actually, they tried to apply exactly the same scheme. So, so what they did, so the problem with it is that it requires lots of, lots of training to do this. So what they did, they actually run multiple robots to handle this. Yeah? Yeah, so they were trying and trying, and after almost a million trials, they were able to do very simple, basic kind of picking up the objects. This sounds really, doesn't, doesn't look nice. Yeah, this million trials, uh, that's something, something is not the right way. Well, they did it anyway. So, okay, this is a little bit, no, not too much. Sorry for this. <laughs> Okay, um, so what is really happening? So we have this input-output. So what is, what the system is doing is actually tries to learn that at the input is, there is this image and at the output is what the system is going to do next. So I'm going to grasp by looking at the image, okay? But, and there is a problem with it because it has this, this number, the, the entire camera, number of dimensions is uh, it's quite large. This is a real problem with, with this. And uh, effectively, what's effectively the problem with it is that manipulation or any kind of robotic kind of uh, learning with this this kind of deep learning stuff is very difficult because it requires lots of lots of trials, ro lots of examples, and the robots have have to play again and again. So well. It's, it's a problem, really. So can we do, the question is, can we do this better? So we can do this better. And I'm going to show you uh, what we did in Birmingham. Uh, and this is something which can, uh, can affect, hopefully, a lot the robotic manipulation. Uh, so let's, let's get here. And um, so we have a grass demonstration. I'm going to show you how it works a little bit. Not too much. And uh, what we want to do, we want to, so the robot is, we're teaching the robots to grasp something, okay? And what we would like to do when there is something new coming, the objects are never the same. The world is never the same. It's changing all the time. We want to know that, okay, it may be grasped in this way, yeah? So um, how can we do this? Okay, we can do this by looking at what is, how does it touch, what is under the fingers, yeah? And this is what we did. Uh, also, we would like to look at it from a more generic perspective. So we are also looking at the walking robots. Yeah, so you can also look at this uh, in terms of, OK, that we, we don't want it actually to train a grasp, but also to, to make the robot walking. So it will recognize that I have to step over there, but not in some different, different way. So I will not. Uh, die in, a, in some, some, I don't know, some, uh, some gap. Um, all right, so this is how we're doing it, actually. We, take, we create something like a model for each of the parts of the robot, and uh, we learn it, and we ask the question where this model could be, okay? And in the, in the new situation, and we model this as a probability distribution. Hopefully you remember this from school. <laughs> and this is how, how this is really done. And yeah, and this works in a way that if the more something similar, the more likely it's on the new place. So this is how it works for domestic, domestic uh, uh, stuff from kitchen. This is one of the projects we've been doing. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit later uh, that we can transfer to completely different objects. Okay, so how do we manage to do this for entire robots? We can do this by using all of them at the same time, okay? And this transfer actually very nicely. And we can do things way more than Google can do. So we train on a, for a complex hand how to grasp various things over there. 
so there are two, uh, two stages. So there is this training that we actually teach the robots. That this is the way I'm going to grasp. And then when the robot sees something new, it, uh, it first look at uh, the image, then it's, it tries to predict what's going, where I should grasp, how, how do I know where I should grasp, okay? And then it does it. Okay, so this is, this is how, it wor how it works. So it tries, it, it looks like different combinations, it thinks what's, what's, what's the best way. Here we go. And automatically recognizes what kind of, how it can grasp actually the thing. All right, so we did this also for uh, so-called soft hands. So this is like a humanoid like hand which is very soft. So it's like, like for using, uh, uh, safely using for some fragile materials. We can also do this. All right, so currently this is, uh, well, it really works, I have to say. It's, a, uh, it's called state of the art in grasping, means that there is nothing better so far as I know. We need only one example to do this, not uh, uh, 800,000 as Google needed, okay? Uh, well, there are some limitations to this as well. Uh, to be fair, there are plenty of people working on this topic. This is not something like someone is thinking about grasping. Grasping is a, it's a really uh, important topic. Uh, and there are lots of algorithms about this, and many people around the world for the last 30 years, at least. Uh, however, uh, I have to say that we probably are at the top right now. So what is the next stage? So this is the part, the dark part. I haven't entered yet, but we are thinking about this. So we secured right now the US and EU, uh, EU uh, patents for it. Uh, we have a project with uh, uh, KUKA, which is the largest, one of the largest robotic companies right now. And we're about to start licensing to the uh, companies. Uh, we have um, uh, 6.5 million euros. This was the largest robotics uh, project uh, in the, uh, um, from the two calls back. 2014 and there are two more large projects actually ongoing uh, about to we hope we, we get them and yeah it's now there's a big question about this startup which I would love to learn from people around uh, around me here what to do next because we have uh, something which can have uh, has a potential okay well there are, here are some applications uh, so this is the project we've been mostly working with to uh, develop these algorithms, uh, which is about the robots in a human environment. Uh, so that's why you, you could see uh, mugs or the uh, kettles or, and, and so forth. Uh, this is now the, uh, um, the interesting project. So we are collaborating with NNL, which is the uh, National Nuclear Lab in uh, in, uh, in UK, but also in CEA, so this is a uh, French corresponding lab. And the task here is that there is uh, plenty of nuclear junk around. So obviously the problem with this is that human, human, uh, humans cannot go there, really, because uh, it's, too, it's too risky. And um, the robots are perfect for it. So this is one we are looking into, and the cost is it's uh, the cost of removal. Removal is it's just out of the roof completely. It's 200 billion. So uh, solving this problem even in one percent actually that's uh, quite a quite something. Uh, here is another one we are looking into, uh, which is logistics. So unfortunately, this is a very unpopular topic because it will cause uh, massive uh, uh, losses of jobs of some people because we are looking to replace actually people to, to do some uh, boring like picking and place things uh, in, uh, in uh, warehouses. Uh, but if we won't be the first, there will be many others because there is a uh, lot of competition in this area. Um, okay, so just a conclusion. We don't need to worry about term terminators. 
I think it was quite clear, actually, from the, from the uh, videos I, I, I've shown you. Um, deep learning is not the best solution out there. It cannot be used, so I'm going to disappoint many people probably who heard about deep learning. No, it's not going to work. It's going to work only with some big data, but that's it. Uh, well, and um, regarding, the, regarding the learning algorithms, so we, uh, what the people are currently doing are looking not into simple solutions like input output, but really looking into what is the kind of a structure behind. Yeah? So this is like a scientific part. And this is what actually we did, because the algorithm I presented to you it can also use deep learning in the end, if you want to. But it's a, it's a scheme to connect things together. All right, and uh, application, you've seen some. Uh, uh, but there are several others. So uh, waste processing decommissioning, so this is, this is one, another hot uh, topic right now. Assembling in factories, so this is already on for years. Uh, but uh, you have to remember that this assembling in car factories is actually fully controlled. Is there are, these robots are, have no senses, so there are these pre-programmed robots, okay? Well, we are talking about the assembling, uh, about things which are, um, uh, for example, fle with flexible materials or the materials which are difficult to handle in some way. There is also servicing, maintenance and repair, especially in, uh, in mines. Uh, so we are looking at this in particular in, in uh, 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 um, in uh, areas when it's too dangerous for, uh, for people to actually to work. Uh, and there is also the last one we actually s started to look into is to, um, in prosthetics, when um, and this is a, uh, a chance for people who have no upper limbs. Uh, uh, so there are solutions which uh, reads the brain, uh, which can read the brain directly. The problem with them, they are not very reliable. Why this uh, combining with uh, something like this technology can actually uh, simplify this. Yeah, so this is one of the uh, things we are looking at. I think that's pretty much this. So there are some important people behind I've been collaborating with. Uh, and thank you. Thank you very much, Marek. So as we've heard, no terminators yet. Any questions? Any questions about, robot, about robots or grasping objects? What's your name? Może być po polsku. Sorry, I don't. Ah, oh, okay, Polish. you don't. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Alexandra, I um, used to work on uh, the Lyrec project, which was a social robotics project some years ago, and. I wonder whether in the prosthetics kind of end of things you might have. Um, a real chance because the only product that I've seen that is really functional in the market and has done really well is a Swedish company that has made a robotic arm. It's not even about graspability, but it's a robotic arm that allows a um, person to feed themselves because it kind of scoops up some food and then brings it to their mouth. Um, so there's very little around that space. Is Do you have the resources to go after all of these different lines of inquiry or uh, you're just presenting and hoping that someone <laughs> will you know uh, okay so we first of all thank you for this question so uh, first of all we just started uh, to explore this uh, so uh, there is uh, we might have one potential partner in germany and we probably be applying for the h 2020 next year uh, so obviously as you said, this requires uh, multiple human resources, actually, and the expertise to, to bring the thing together. But the idea behind this is that uh, uh, because of this reverse problem, that you have to re reverse engineer kind of the signals of the brain, and this is very noisy and never works well, there is maybe a hope that with these tricks we can do this all together. But obviously, this is, as you said, it's a bigger challenge because there is a hardware, there is a... It has to all be done in as one thing, obviously. Any more questions? Thank you very much, Marek, once again. Thank you.